What's going on guys? Welcome back to Make It Tasty. My name is AJ and we are gonna continue on with the holiday recipes. Macarons came into my head. Now, a lot of people think macarons are scary because they can be seen as pretty difficult and I will admit I've tried them a lot and I failed several times before I finally got them right, but don't be scared, embrace it, accept the challenge. So today we are going to be making hot cocoa flavored macarons. These are perfect for the winter the holidays. They're delicious. They remind me of one of my favorite drinks that I never drink because it always upsets my stomach. What a fail. So before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can come back and see all the other videos I will be posting every week. Also give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And the recipe for this will be on my website, makeittastywithaj.com. Go check that out for my blog and all of my other recipes as well. Alrighty, let's get started. To get started with this, we need our food processor in which we're going to put some almond flour with some confectioner's sugar and some salt, as well as some cocoa powder. You want to blitz this on a medium speed until it comes together into a fine texture. This needs to be really fine so it incorporates into our batter. Then I'm just going to transfer this to another bowl in which I'm going to sift this mixture again to ensure that it is as fine as possible. And once that is all sifted, I'm going to set it aside. Now in the bowl of my stand mixer with a whisk attachment, I'm putting some room temperature egg whites. Okay, so maybe you're thinking, what if I didn't leave my egg whites out and they're not room temperature? Well, friends, these need to be room temperature egg whites because they will beat up a lot better and a lot quicker. So leave them out, and if you forget to, just put them in a bowl of warm water for about five minutes and you'll be good to go. Along with my egg whites, I'm going to add some salt. Now I'm just going to mix this on a medium speed until we get soft peaks. Now soft peaks are when the mixture is foamy and barely stands up on its own. It is not glossy yet. After you get your soft peaks, you're going to turn the mixer back on a medium low speed and gradually add in some granulated sugar. And once that sugar is all incorporated, you're going to turn the mixer on to high for a few minutes until this mixture comes to a thick, white, glossy texture known as stiff peaks. After you reach stiff peaks, beat in some vanilla extract until it's incorporated and then add some food coloring. Since these are chocolate, I want a deep brown color. Now I'm going to create my own brown color by mixing together red, blue, and yellow food coloring. You can do this if you don't have brown food color. I could not find it, so I'm getting creative. I'm stopping the coloring when I get a nice light tan color kind of resembling a light cocoa color. Once we are done with the food coloring, we're going to gradually start adding in our almond flour mix. This is where it is very critical. You want to gently fold this in in three parts. So I'm starting with the first third of my almond flour mixture, gently folding it in. I'm going in with the second third of my almond flour mixture, folding again. And then I'm going to go in with the last third, and this is where it is very important to pay attention to how much you are mixing this. You want to keep folding this very gently until you get a consistency that barely falls off of the spatula into a ribbon that disappears just barely into the batter. You could compare it to maybe molten lava. That's fun, we're eating molten lava. Once you're at this point, you can transfer your macaron batter into a piping bag with a round tip and you can line a cookie sheet with either a silicone mat or if you don't have one, parchment paper is just fine. Pipe even circles of the macaron batter a couple inches apart until you go through all of the batter. Try to focus on consistency here. Once you have piped all of your circles of macaron batter, it is extremely important to let these sit at room temperature for 20 to 30 minutes. This will allow them to skin over and hold their shape in the oven. You'll know they're ready to go in the oven when you can lightly touch them and they are not sticky. You want to bake these at 300 degrees for about 17 minutes. Now while those macarons are cooling, I'm going to make the marshmallow filling. So in a heavy bottom sauce pot, I'm adding some water with some light corn syrup and some granulated sugar as well. You want to start cooking this on a medium low heat, stirring with a wooden spoon until the sugar is dissolved. Make sure not to let this mixture boil until the sugar is all the way dissolved. 
Once everything is dissolved and mixed together in here, you want to cook this mixture on a medium high heat until it reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit on a candy thermometer. While that is getting to temperature, in my stand mixer I'm going to be putting some more room temperature egg whites with some cream of tartar. I'm just going to give this a little mix until it is nicely combined. And once my sugar mixture is getting close to the point at which we need it, I'm going to turn my mixer back onto a medium speed so we can get our egg whites to soft peaks. Remember the foamy consistency? Once we reach our soft peaks with our egg whites, I'm adding in some more vanilla extract and I'm keeping the mixer on a low speed because now our sugar syrup is at 240 degrees. So now on a medium speed, I'm going to very carefully in a thin constant stream, pour in this sugar mixture into the egg whites and keep doing this until all of the sugar is mixed in. Once it is, you're going to turn the mixer onto a high speed and mix for a solid few minutes until you get a thick, white, glossy texture and the mixture has started to cool down. And voila folks, that is our marshmallow filling. Now once this is done, I'm going to set it aside until we are ready to pipe it onto our macarons. Clearly this makes a lot, so whatever you do not use, just set aside, it keeps great at room temperature, and you can use it for a number of things. Now the final component is a chocolate ganache, so in my bowl I'm going to weigh out some bittersweet chocolate, and I'm also going to add some heavy cream. Once those are in my bowl, I'm going to set the bowl over a pan of gently simmering water. I'm going to stir it occasionally until the chocolate starts to melt. Then I'm going to whisk it until it is a nice, shiny, thick chocolate ganache. And I'm going to remove it from the heat. Now that all of our components are done, I've got my chocolate ganache in a piping bag with a small round tip, my marshmallow filling in another piping bag with a large round tip. I've laid out all of my macarons, matching them so that they all have even sizes with each other, flat side up. On half of the macarons, I'm going to pipe some marshmallow filling. And after all the marshmallow filling is piped, I'm just going to put the tops on the macarons to make nice little sandwiches. Then I'm just going to gently dust over some cocoa powder that I've mixed with confectioner sugar. And then on the top of each macaron, I'm going to pipe a small circle of my bittersweet ganache. Now because these are hot cocoa macarons, I want them to look like hot cocoa. So I have a couple of mini marshmallows that I'm putting on the top of each one. That ganache is gonna serve as the glue so the marshmallows stick to them. And once you finish, you'll be so proud of yourself because you made a very creative and delicious dessert that will impress anybody this holiday season. And here we have it guys, hot chocolate macarons now. A little bit of a process, but a really special treat for you or your family, or if you wanna give them as gifts, even better. This is how you win somebody over, I'm telling you. Forget the mistletoe, just give them this. Thank you so very much for joining me today on Make It Tasty. I will be back next week with another great recipe for you guys to check out. Once again, hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button and leave some comments down below for me. The recipe for this is on my website, makeittastywithaj.com. Be sure to go check that out where you can see my blog and all of my other recipes as well. As always, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And remember, if you're going to make it, you better make it tasty. I'll see you next time.